So the 2024 U.S. presidential election is just eight months away. The candidates, if they make it that long, have been selected. And if the polls and pundits are correct, it looks like we already have a winner. Barring any special report between now and Election Day, we interrupt this program to bring you a special report. Ladies and gentlemen, I've just been handed this special report. And it's the news you've either been dreading or anxiously awaiting. Donald Trump is dead. As in, dead last. Trump is ranked dead last. And Donald Trump rated dead last at 45. No, that's not the result of his IQ test. Those are the findings of the American Political Science Association's annual Presidential Greatness Project. And in recognition of his unbridled incompetence, intolerance, ineptitude, and incontinence, the shardy charlatan failed his way to the bottom of this year's list. And thanks to his numerous indictments, indictable crimes, Trump was a shoe in easily out-disgracing last year's worst president ever recipient, himself. Yet despite these lifetime non-achievement awards, Trump is still the savior of MAGA and the Republican Party. And after his latest rally in Virginia, it's no wonder. Trump's painting of the United States as a third world dystopian hellscape on the verge of collapse is a complete and total lie. And more importantly, a disservice to Joe Biden and the Democrats in power who have worked so hard to pull us out of the dumpster fire he created. Which is why I'm here to expose those lies and the lying liar who spreads them. And offer an easy solution on how to keep him out of office. And if you're new here and like what you see, please like and subscribe. And if you can afford to throw a buck or pound or euro into my virtual tip jar, it helps keep my show and democracy alive. Now MAGA, let's start at the beginning. So this revolutionary new movement you've sold your souls to, that you've destroyed your family and friendships over, this make America great again idea Trump claims to have invented, well, that was his first lie to you. And we'll welcome them into a great national crusade to make America great again. Just like he's stolen your minds and your money, Trump stole Make America Great Again from Ronald Reagan. But hey, that's how Donald Trump gets everything, by lying, cheating, and stealing. It's what all the Trumps do. You work hard for what you want in life. You work hard for what you want in life. That your word is your bond, that you do what you say you're gonna do. That your word is your bond, and you do what you say. That you treat people with respect. That you treat people with respect. The, the only limit to, to your achievements is the, is the strength of your dreams, of your and, dreams your willingness to and your willingness to work for them. I left out the part where Melania says she's a proud black woman. But now we are a nation in decline. We are a failing nation. We are a nation that has the highest inflation in 50 years. Yet according to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, the Biden administration has kept inflation under 3.7% for the last nine months, which doesn't come close to a 12-year span which started in 1973, 50 years ago. So you're lying. We're no longer energy independent or energy dominant as we were just a few short years ago. We are a nation that is begging Venezuela and others for oil. Please, please, please help us, Joe Biden says. The nation is more energy independent than ever. Here with the details, Yahoo Finance's Rick Newman. We have been actually exporting more than more energy altogether than we've been importing for, uh, for the last 12 months or so. And that has never happened before for that long. One really good way to measure how dependent we are on foreign energy is our net imports, which are now negative. So we have been selling more energy to the world than we've been taking in from the world for the last year. And that is really good news for this industry. And it's pretty good news for consumers here. And as you can see by this graph, that trend started in 2020. Hmm, what happened in 2020? This is a Fox News special report. Can now project that former Vice President Joe Biden will win Pennsylvania and Nevada, putting him over the 270 electoral votes he needs to become the 46th president of the United States. We are a nation whose leaders are demanding all electric cars, despite the fact that they don't go far, cost too much, and whose batteries are produced in China with materials only available in China. Which is also a lie because the raw materials for electric car batteries come from several countries, including the Democratic Republic of Congo, Indonesia, the Philippines, Argentina, Australia, and Chile, none of which are in China. 
And here's a list of just the top 14 electric vehicle battery manufacturers in the US. You sit on a throne of lies. We are a nation whose economy is collapsing into a cesspool of ruin. Just last year, the world's biggest economy, the US among others, was at risk of recession. Today, though, its GDP is growing faster than expected. Stocks are soaring and the job market is hot. The American economy is not just strong, it's also powered ahead of the European Union, the UK, Japan and other advanced economies. We are a nation that is no longer admired, respected or listened to on the world stage. We are a nation that in many ways has become a joke. Not so fast, sweaty Svengali. According to a Pew Research poll in 12 foreign countries, favorability of the U.S. is almost twice as high under Biden as it was when you were in office. And their trust in Biden to do the right thing regarding foreign affairs is almost four times higher than it was with you. Which explains why world leaders mock you behind your back. <laughs> That's right, Donnie. The U.S. isn't the joke. You are the joke. You are one pathetic loser. We are a nation where free speech is no longer allowed, where crime is rampant and out of control like never before. Violent crime this year, according to the FBI, is down 8%. Property crime is down more than 6%. And murder in major American cities is down 12.7% after going up during the pandemic. New York City is a crime den. Chicago is a crime den. You look at these great cities, Los Angeles, San Francisco. Murder in each of those cities is actually down. Other major cities like Philadelphia, Detroit, and Atlanta show even sharper declines. Liar! Liar! Now you know why the gullible MAGA sheeple have such a skewed perception of the actual condition of our country. The truth is the stock market just hit an all-time high and unemployment is at the lowest rate since 1952. So Trump lies about Biden's real accomplishments. And it doesn't help when wishy-washy, spineless weasels like Lady G throw their fealty his way. Well, I'm going to talk to the Trump supporters for a minute. I don't know who you are, and I don't know why you like this guy. I actually like President Trump. He's been very nice to me. He's allowed me to be in his world. He's a race-baiting, xenophobic, religious bigot. President Trump deserves the Nobel Peace Prize and then some. Saying that John McCain and people like him are not American heroes. The American people will not tolerate what he is doing now regarding those who have served. And this is the beginning of the end of Donald Trump. To the conservatives out there, make sure you vote DonaldJTrump.com. Go tonight, give the president some money. I'm not going to try to get into the mind of Donald Trump because I don't think there's a whole lot of space there. I think he's a kook. I think he's crazy. I think he's unfit for office. You know what concerns me about the American press is this endless, endless a attempt to label the guy as some kind of kook, uh, not fit to be president. I think he's a kook. I think he's unfit for office. I think you're the saddest, most pathetic political cuckold ever to grovel at Trump's feet. And that's saying a lot. So 250 years ago, our forefathers rolled the dice on this democracy experiment. Back then, political corruption amounted to a new whale oil candle or a hunk of salted pork. Alexander Hamilton, who created the U.S. financial system, was so destitute when he died that his friends had to take up a collection for his funeral. John Adams was so broke, he was forced to wait tables. So his friend John Hancock bought him a new suit so Adams wouldn't embarrass himself going into Congress. But this was when our political leaders had integrity and genuinely cared about our country and her people. Today, our country's littered with grifters and opportunists who abuse their power to line their pockets. And with the exception of a stray Democrat or two, they're overwhelmingly Republicans. Their sole objective is to stick Trump back in office so they can fleece every last penny from our country's coffers while he burns the place to the ground. And control what books you're allowed to read. And control what you do with your body. And force their religion down your throats. You think this is hyperbole? Look, welcome to the end of democracy. 
<laughs> we are here to overthrow it completely. We didn't get all the way there on January 6th, but we will we, we will endeavor to, forget, to get rid of it and replace it with, with this right here. We'll replace it with this right, right. here. Amen. That's right, because all glory, all glory is not to government, all glory to God. So how do we keep Trump and his ilk from destroying two and a half centuries of American democracy? Easy. Vote. Blue straight down the ticket because the Republican Party is the MAGA party and their destruction and pillaging and abuse of your constitutionally guaranteed civil rights is just getting started.